Try this problem. I've started as usual by redrawing the original structure. Now we make modifications. We begin at the initial tail. Here's the initial tail. Where are the electrons coming from? The tail is pointing to a negative formal charge. We know that means the electrons are coming from a lone pair. Since the lone pair wasn't drawn in the first place, we don't need to erase it. But since this is the initial tail, we need to change the charge on this atom. This atom, oxygen, started with a negative charge and it's losing electrons. So the oxygen gets a zero formal charge. And now we can erase the tail of that arrow. Now we proceed to the next um, portion, which is this head. This head indicates the formation of a pi bond because it's pointing to the middle of the sigma bond. Now, now you can see that we're in the middle of the string of arrows, so there's no need to change any charges. I'm ready to erase the head of this arrow. The next thing to look at is the tail of this arrow. It looks like the tail is in the middle of the pi bond, so the electrons are coming from the pi bond. So we erase the pi bond. But we're still in the middle of the string of arrows, so there's no need to change any charges. We can erase the tail here. By the way, now you can see why um, we want to recopy our arrows in this picture, but save the arrows in this picture. We're saving the arrows, for one reason to save the arrows is so that we can clearly see always what the initial tail was and the final head. Over here, we're constantly erasing the arrows. So it's also useful to have a picture where we haven't erased the arrows. That way we can see where the initial tail and the final head is. We need to know where those are because remember, those are the only two places where we have to change the charges. The final head here is pointing to this carbon. Since the head is on the carbon, it's creating a lone pair. Now we know we don't actually usually draw the lone pairs. However, because this is the final head, um, we do have to change the charge. Well, this carbon started off neutral and it's gaining electrons, so it ends up with a negative charge. I hope you're always, always, always checking that the charge is balanced. Let's check that the charge is balanced. This picture has a negative one formal charge, and this picture also has a negative one formal charge. The charge is balanced. Don't let yourself get distracted by these other pi bonds down here. There's no arrows pointing towards them or away from them, so they're not changing. We only make the changes dictated by the arrows. Well, you can see that I've simply taken the last resonance structure that we just obtained, and I've drawn some new arrows on it. So now I'd like you to draw the next resonance structure that is suggested by this pair of arrows. We redraw the previous structure, including redrawing the arrows. Now we look for the initial tail. Here's the initial tail. It's located on a negative charge, so the electrons are coming from a lone pair. Since we haven't drawn the lone pair, we don't need to erase it. But since this is the initial tail, we need to change the charge. This carbon started with a negative charge, and it's losing electrons, so it becomes uh, a neutral formal charge. And now we can erase the tail of that arrow. By the way, I hope it's obvious to you how crucial it is to work in pencil on these problems, because our whole technique is based on drawing a picture and then erasing parts of the picture. So we should always be doing organic chemistry in pencil. We should always be using a good eraser. Now the head of this arrow is pointing to the middle of this sigma bond, so we create a pi bond. Now we're in the middle of the string of arrows, so there's no need to change any charges. Now we come across this tail, the tail is coming from the pi bond, so we erase the pi bond. We're still in the middle of the string of arrows, so there's no need to change any charges, but we erase the tail. And now we're at the final head. The final head is pointing directly at this carbon. That indicates we're creating a lone pair. Now, we usually don't draw lone pairs, but since we're at the final head, we do need to change the charge. This carbon started with a zero formal charge, and it's gaining electrons, so it becomes negative. And now we can erase the head. Now we check that the charge is balanced. We already decided that this picture had a negative one formal charge, 
And we can see that this picture also has a negative one formal charge. The charge is still balanced. Now, once again, I've taken the structure that we just finished drawing and I've put in some new electron pushing arrows. Please, once again, try to draw the next structure in the sequence based on the arrows. Once again, we redraw and modify. That includes redrawing the electron pushing arrows. We look for the initial tail. Here's the initial tail. This is not the initial tail because it's in the middle of the string of arrows. This is the initial tail. Where are the electrons coming from? Well, the tail is on a negative charge, which means the electrons are coming from a lone pair. Since the lone pair wasn't drawn, we don't need to erase it. But because we're at the initial tail, we do have to change a charge. This carbon is starting with a negative formal charge. It's losing electrons, so it ends up with a neutral formal charge. And now that we've got the charge right, we can erase that tail. This head indicates the formation of a pi bond. But now we're in the middle of the arrows, so there's no need to change charges. We erase the head. This tail indicates that we're taking the electrons from the pi bond, so we better erase that pi bond. But we're still in the middle of the arrows, so there's no need to change a charge. We can just erase that tail. Please remember to always erase um, each tail when you're done with it, and erase each head when you're done with it. But make sure you don't erase a head or a tail before you're done with it. And over here, um, now we're at the final head. This arrow is pointing to this atom, which means that we're creating a lone pair. As usual, we won't actually draw in the lone pair. But because we're at the final head in the sequence, we have to change the charge. This atom started with a neutral formal charge, and it's gaining electrons. So it ends with a negative formal charge. Now we check that the charge is balanced. We already decided this picture has a negative one charge. And now we can see this picture also has a negative one charge. Once again, let me emphasize the importance of focusing on the charges. The whole reason we're doing this is to get the charges right. Well, there's a pretty simple rule when you have multiple arrows. You're always going to change exactly two charges. You're going to change the charge on the atom at the initial tail, and you're going to change the charge on the atom at the final head and you're not going to change any other charges. Well, now, here's the resonance structure that we just finished drawing, and I put in yet another pair of electron pushing arrows. Here's yet another pair of electron pushing arrows. Try to draw a resonance structure suggested by these electron pushing arrows. I'm running out of room, so uh, I've redrawn uh, the next picture up here in the top right. But again, I'm using a, a double-headed arrow to show that this is a resonance structure that we can derive from this structure down here. Now, so far, all we've done is redrawn the original structure. Now, let's modify. The initial tail is here. It's on a negative charge, which means that we're moving a lone pair. Since the lone pair wasn't drawn in the first place, we don't need to erase it. But since this is the initial tail, we need to change the charge. This atom is starting with a negative charge, and it's losing electrons. So that atom ends up with a zero formal charge, and now we can erase that tail. This head is pointing to the middle of the sigma bond, so we're creating a pi bond. There's a new pi bond. Now we're in the middle of the string of arrows, so there's no need to change any charges, but we can erase the head. Now we're looking at this tail. The tail is coming from a pi bond, so we erase that pi bond. This is in the middle of the string of arrows, so we don't change any charges, but we erase that tail. And now we're at the final head. This head is pointing directly at the oxygen, which means we're creating a lone pair. We don't draw the lone pair, but since we're at the final head, we know we're going to have to change a charge. This atom started off neutral, and it's gaining electrons. So it ends up with a negative formal charge. Let's check that the charges balance. We started with a resonance structure with a negative one charge. And this last resonance structure also has a negative one charge. Incidentally, did you notice that this is the same resonance structure that we started with? We started with a negative charge on the oxygen, then moved it to the right-hand carbon, then the bottom carbon, then the left-hand carbon. And since this is a ring, we were able to move all the way around back to the oxygen again. 
Uh, of course, if you were drawing these resonance structures on your own, there would be no need to redraw this picture since we started with it. So if you were actually trying to draw all the resonance structures, you wouldn't bother drawing both this picture and this picture. We just did that for practice with using electron pushing arrows. Again, um, uh, in reality, you're not usually going to be given the electron pushing arrows. You have to come up with them on your own, but it's still a really valuable exercise for us at this point to learn how to draw the structures when I do give you the arrows. And eventually, we're going to get to the point where you can draw the arrows yourself.